name is Adar. Uh, I am working as an engineer within Mobi for the last five years. And uh, my talk is regarding all the my journey of five years within Mobi and four. <laughs> so we face a lot of issues because like the process of like their AMD process is also going around and our company is starting started in 2007 and you talk about it very, very, very carefully. So we my, I am going to explain you a few major issues that we face in production and how critical, how important they are for our businesses. <coughs> so, a few uh, in go about Inmobi and our East Inmobi, uh, uh, you know about Inmobi, Inmobi. So, we are basically a mobile advertising company. We we are a we, we are with a gap between a publisher and a financial advisor. Uh, we serve ads on all your mobile handsets. Like that. You all you might be using smartphones and you see a pop of the we are the guys who are doing that, so that's sorry for that. So these uh, so we have a like uh, the, uh, we have around one billion unique users in the net network, which we have unique users which means the device IDs of all the users. Like we, we know we we uh, we want to improve our ad experience to all the users to serve the relative ads to them so that it will it will help the, those users also to for, for uh, more uh, easier access of the ads for the relative product. So we have around 140,000 free ad requests per second and uh, 50 TB of user data in our network. So when I, when I talk about this user net the data it introduces all the things like how user is relevant, how we, uh, they are they they are more profile or domain these kind of stuff. So I am working as a like open source degree professional in the last four and five years. Uh, I have expertise in my school also, post school, but mainly our we are post school prop. So because it also it also scaling us with our business as well. It's not a thing that we are facing this season, we are stuck on it. So this community is also very like excellent to show all the relative things, all the issues and all stuff. And uh, we have around uh, working, uh, two no SQL major data stores as well. One is the IRS right? we are using for uh, real time and energy, energy, energy productive purposes. Where you are 
less QDs are running around like 10k, 20k, anyway process. But if you had a scale of around 120 to 200 GB of logs per day on one master.
So every time from the last four years we are getting calls like this issue happened, page duty calls and these also. So that's what that is that's what a life of a young one engineer is. Every time you get a call, you have to wake up and see what happens there, you know, what, what, what's wrong with the new database server. So what are the different issues that can come to? So uh, there are so many issues that can come because both database uh, is a like is a bottom layer of your whole application. So anything wrong happened in a layer of like a network, you are also gonna face some issues. So since the setup is like this, so any anywhere you see some uh, network issues, some switches miscommunication, your streaming resolution is gonna be delayed. In fact, there is no mistake from your side, but you're gonna face some failures like say your application is delayed. So uh, I classified major major problems into four types. <coughs> what are the user connection problems and application issues? Second is fragmentation problem, application issues, and some mixture of like smaller issues all together. So <coughs> you you start you uh, created a database server and give connections to your application users. Now application users ask, make sure you give uh, like a uh, finite the like, genuine number of users to your application. It's not like the application users come to you and say like any hundred connections. And hundred connections for an hundred or more hundred connections is like is like a very very big 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 uh, big demand. So when whenever any any connections, it is not a sim simple connection. It asks for many more other things. It asks for RAM. So if you if this is clearly mentioned in the PG uh, like documentation. We have the number of connections directly depends upon the shared memory of your server, and your throughput will also fail if your if your if your resources are not properly allocated. So, and uh, you you cannot face this issue too many connections for role and within idle transaction and all these issues. So, what what can we do? What, what can we do like to so solve these problems? You can you can do the client pulling from your application side. It's not only the so from DB perspective, from read, read scaling, you can do the polling by using PG function. But if you should force application users, like see, why, why can't you use this, this technology like Hibernate and all this stuff, so that you can do the application polling. And you can you can have some smart scripts written on the IO database server, where you can avoid your hang up of connection. And one more, since we have a like geographical distributed database servers, make sure your application servers also sit on the same code. Because whenever you make a like different code of call, it will also add to a ping latency <coughs> requirement. So if your application setting is a different column and database setting is a different column, it is going to be a slow on your database server. And uh, give each component of application a separate user. It's not like so that whenever you face any issues, you're gonna you gonna like check the log and you can easily see that this user is coming from this application and from this client as well. So that you can when reach out to those person and say, hey guy, why is what uh, you're doing this much being in a database server? So and you can do a like hot like like a like a code score, like you can set a skip, smart skip, we can uh, check our 10 minutes and 15 minutes, like if there is a state connections and all these things. So you can kill automatically. So so these are uh, second part is uh, fragmentation problems. So it's uh, since it's a relation database system, the fragmentation is uh, like we uh, we have one page application which is uh, doing around uh, in one minute around 40 to 50 gig updates in this single table because uh, we are serving ads accordingly and we update our revenues accordingly. So the table size is very small. If you check in this output, you see the tuple count is 30 k, but the head tuple count is but 120, uh, 1,120,000,000, right? And that type of percentage is 90%. So whenever you face these kind of problems, so in fact, uh, we, we didn't get any segmentation error. So we got a lot on Sloney delay, like Evan has also told. A, if your updates are taking too much time on this segmentation table, so if it, this table is fragmented, it means your update is going to be like taking this much, very, very long time. It's, and you, uh, you have you will the, definitely you will the application issues because your select is going to be more, more slower than with this fragmentation table. And if uh, if you check the original size, 30 gate table, the tuple length, length of this is around 120-30 MB. 
But at that time, when the breadth of percentage is 90 percent, the size is around 3 to 4 G. So it, it also consumes more disk on the database server. So that's why how can how can we solve like these uh, these kind of fragmentation problems? So Postgres could also provide some things, but uh, these things the first four things you can set the more aggressive your auto writing with your table size recording. You can you, you, you should not wait your for the default auto writing to run. You can set auto writing parameters according to your table record. You know this is a very very heavily updated table, and you're gonna set some parameters of these table only so that the auto vacuum is to complete in a finite amount of time. You will not make that table that loaded to the database server. So if you see the these things, vacuum threshold and ML threshold, it directly depends upon the estimated number of rows in your table. If your table is around uh, 200k, you can set this threshold that uh, after these much updates of table, if it, your vacuum will run accordingly. Or in percentage, vacuum scale factor and vacuum analyze scale factor is even maintained percentage as well. Uh, apart from this, but uh, if you still see some issues, like your auto vacuum is not able to finish properly in some, uh, like uh, not able to defragment the table, then there is some, there is one more very good uh, parameter field factor. But this, this thing you need to be mentioned when you create a table, not after you see the fragmentation issue. If you, like, if you know that, if you, if you talk to the reason people and see this much issue, that this much uh, table is going to be heavily updated, then you create, then you can create the table with this percentage, like 10 to 20 percent. So what it does, so internally, tables are stored in pages. So what it does, it will not pull up, uh, like fill the page whole page completely with all the rows. It will fill only 20 percent of the page and leave all other 80 percent is blank. So that when any new update comes, the update will return only in the same page. So that, 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 that this way it can help. So when, when, it, when, so it, it can help you save space also. So next, uh, this is a like uh, very critical for us uh, application, this replication related issues. So many times we see issues like with the uh, servers and network. So uh, what are the different kind of network issues you can face when you have this this kind of setup in your production? So the first issue say is that uh, your standby is going to be like. Uh, out of thing. It's of no use if you face these kind of issues, like requested bar segment has already been removed. It means the master, uh, master database server writes raw file in, in its PTX box directory, and uh, your streaming application generation is that much that it will uh, automatically purge the older raw files, which is not yet updated to the slave. And then it will not be able to get it. But this functionality is like if you go 9.4 versions of PostgreSQL, there is a replication slot available which can take care of these issues. And this uh, could not send data to wall stream. So this issue usually come many times when you have some issues with an, uh, your NIC, network interface card, or some network, some Ethernet card issues when you server. So that you can maybe some package dropout from the server or some, some other kind of stuff. And uh, this uh, last, uh, could not open page uh, PG explore. So when you you have a master and slave, when you make a slave as a master, so uh, how streaming application works? It create a sequence of wall files, the name of the file file. And at next time when your uh, third slave is going to this master, it, it is not able to understand the writing sequence of your new slave, new master. Uh, the uh, next part is, uh, so one more thing in streaming application is you have to uh, set max connections equally as in the master and both in slave. So if you have slave as lower max connection, you, it, it, it will fail to restart. It will say, say your master is saying that this much max connection is there and we, I cannot start with this less less connection. So the last is, and the, when you, uh, this PG based backup reward, according to backup is being phase the issues, when uh, your uh, master database server might, uh, because when every time you set up a slave, you set up a entry in your master that master database server that this slave is going to connect to this master server. You should have this entry in PTH recon saying that uh, it can trust this slave user to connect to copy data from the master server. So if you 
fail to miss the uh, miss the ranking in the previous one, you can face the issue like PG based backup reporting back kind of issues. So uh, uh, this uh, reputation setup, so few things which are more very very important uh, is you should keep an eye of your number of PG log files in editing area. We have a script which will have to just count these number of codes. So we have some network allocations like for different different code database centers. So uh, all of a sudden, like Friday you are okay, and Monday you came to say that your wall files are increasing drastically. So if you are doing a 300 to 400 wall files for, uh, so Monday you are doing it like 300 to 10 x increase, then definitely you are going to face some network issues. So if have have some like clear understanding of your network bandwidth uh, also, like how much data can be replicated from this master to this place, this this data center to this data center. So like like I told you before, like PG replication software is also implemented so that you will not face this out of sync play issues. So so that you don't have to reset every place accordingly. So one of the beautiful things that uh, recently we have we have faced one issue where uh, this. So this is a like production set. So we recently faced one issue where uh, business team uh, wants a new replication, kind of a small colo setup in new data center, which is geographically dis different is distributed to another data, another place. It's not in the like lead code data center. So they need this like uh, in, in a very short time. So but our network team is not able to like say that it, it cannot be possible and it needs some extra like as extra deal with other network provider and all this stuff. So, but we set up a like like totally internet channel. The new setup is yeah. So we set up a uh, new data center on the internet and say let's 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 try this. But the amount of wall file generation is that much that our new data center is not able to catch up properly. So it, there is always a delay of some like while because the network is, is not 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 that great. So, uh, but what but, but we can do with assets kernel is it can compress your log files which are able to, which, 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 which is going to be replicated to this data center. So, I, 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 I haven't seen any improvements in like some uh, compression of these log files in latest version, but maybe it comes in future. So, if you want to reduce your data replication, uh, the amount of data replicated, you can use this SSS tunneling. Which, which can like compress your number of files <coughs> and so that less amount of data is only need to be replicated to your new place. Sorry? Uh, and from yeah. your experience, what was the compression rate for the people? So it's a, it's a basic compression of SSH, which SSH does. Uh -huh. Simple command of SSH hide and seek. Yeah. So you can set a tunnel, a new tunnel between your master and play, like on a different port. So what it does is it will treat as a tunnel as a network layer on this group. Master and scale. So when every time when this X log files mm -hmm. complete copy, it uses that compression tunnel. Sure. Not not this. Yeah, I understand. But from your experience, what was the compression level like? You could reduce the task by fifty percent, ten percent. So uh, I it it we have we, we I don't know the number yet, how much percentage, but we have seen delays of well hours, fourteen hours. This much delay. And we are generating around 300 to 400 MB files per hour in this X7 master. So 300 into 16, this one file is 15 MB. So it's around uh, 16, 3 GB of data. So uh, sorry, uh, 16 into 16 into 300. Uh, uh, approximately 3 GB. Yeah. So 3 GB of data. So then it needs to be. But after enabling this SSH compression. They haven't faced issues. Even, even our delays, because sometimes that wall then reaches thousand level. So yeah. after this enabling, we haven't faced any issues in this, like this. After this SS tunneling. So there are some other issues also, like uh, uh, when uh, you have uh, around uh, your reporting database, where you have around like uh, 14 terabytes. So you have we have around uh, like uh, eight to ten SSDs, two TB SSD on a master server. And we have, we have created a table spaces like accordingly on these master tables, the 10 table spaces. So if any new requirement comes and you want to create a new table space, you need to uh, make sure that this directory and this uh, SSD also created in all your replication space. It, it's 
not like that. Ki you uh, you adding a card, you know, master, and uh, you you have an addition in the play. Then you will play with no exception. This, this table space cannot be added, and it is the resolution is broken. So make sure that you whenever any time you create a new table space or new SSD in the master server, you create it on the same level. So next are two issues that the could not be blocked. Uh, this is operation this. So uh, there might be some uh, cases where you can see, uh, see the data corruption, uh, sorry, data corruption issues. Your indexes are not uh, like to gone totally out of, like it's not able to read properly. So uh, you 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 have you identified a table, but you're not able to be able to solve the problem. The only way is you can do a backup, or you can you can you can do a like drop the indexes, see these indexes are causing problem, or recreate those indexes again. So that that way you can you can fix this uh, like VT restore item uh, this error, but uh, you need to uh, you need to add aggressive monitoring also like this this would be, uh, this table is this is segmented and you you need to be conscious to look on this ish, these errors in, by using KLN mail or some other stuff. So KLN mail what it does is it will it will, it will generate an alert of any 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 kind of errors or panics in that that comes in your OS uh, like mm -hmm. you so when you uh, when you when you talk about monitoring and alerting, so uh, few things which are which are very important to monitor, like your connection stats, how much connection is idle, how much is active, how much is like waiting on all the stuff. And since our application setup is like this, is in land band, we have we have some alerting on Sony also and streaming application delay also. So that table stats are also important, like you we have done with PG stats of all like how much table is fragmented? How much? How much table is? Uh, how much table like sequential access? How much indexes are properly used or not? And transaction stats: How much begins and commits are happening in your database server? And uh, create this. This is a like product option. Like create, uh, update, delete, and these kind of options. We can also we can get these operations by your uh, PG report also. But uh, doing a real time monitoring is a challenge. Like it's a, it's not easy. Like, do a real time operation like this much reads and this much arrives are happening per second level. And uh, client client and system stats, client traffic is all for your application how, how many connections they are connecting and how much they they are using your connections and uh, all this stuff. So that that goes that can also explain about this like all these uh, tables, views and functions which Postgres provides and how can we get this information. Like uh, uh, we we can see all the running queries by using PG stat PG stat activity and all uh, revolution related stuff with the PG stat revolution. So PG stat all tables give you all the, uh, all views of how is your table, how much uh, sequential access, how much index 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 access is, is happening on this table, and. Uh, these functions are also like you can see what is happening in your uh, application. The PG stat table is, is around you take the health of your table, like how much table is fragmented, how much tuple count is there. So that's a like that's very useful uh, function to get the table health information. <coughs> uh, any question? No. So uh, when uh, that that's what we're discussing, like uh, how can that doing a real time and like monitoring and like is a real challenge. How can we so if you if you use any like proprietary solution like uh, Kevin's also speaking, uh, new rally or anything you can do it. But doing a real time monitoring and everything is is uh, is is a, is a, is a tough thing to by using any open source tools. So if you if you uh, if you do a like if you ask anyone like how much the general thing to do a monitoring and everything, I will say negatives and checking at check and ask. Everyone is doing like this way. Like they run a check and a few plugins and do alerting on like from any simple uh, DB to this like electricity from PG uh, side and where waiting is good this and alerting back like this way. But we uh, what we what we are doing differently here is uh, we develop this system like how can we do a real time alerting by uh, using a mixture of uh, diamond, grafana, and graphite and uh, Log stash. So this is a like only one one diagram which which can explain all of the setup. So we have uh, some expertise of Python, so that we wrote some Python custom scripts which can get as much information from a database permanently 
and sending it to your graphite server. So Diamond is a collector which is collecting this much information and uh, it, it's running every minute on all the device servers. So every minute it runs and gathers all the needed information from all your database servers and send it to Graphite. And after the Graphite, since uh, Hello. <laughs> yeah. so since our uh, after the Graphite, we we want some like uh, some dashboards to to kind of like some dashboards at Polo level at dashboards at database level. So we have used Grafana on top of it, Graphite and for a better, a better dashboards. And when it comes to the alerting part, we are using this, this matrix is only for alerting also. So we are sending this matrix to Graphite and there is a check graphite plugin which we are using and which, which reads this value and alert on the basis of this. So there are a uh, few things that we can, uh, we can say like best practices or uh, ten commandments which we can uh, try it out. Like uh, first of all, let's like, capture as many stats as, as you can. Since Poses also provide a lot of function views and classes, you can you can you can use a different function to read all of that. And uh, uh, and CC, it, it's it's not necessarily you can alert on all the stats, but it's, it's it's very important you can have all of the all the stats. Because sometimes you might correlate some problem what is happening on a database server. So these much as much stats you can capture, it will it will definitely help you better understand. So one more thing, like as I said, test your backups also. So it's not backups are not important. Resource is also important. So we we are sending uh, as we are doing, we are doing backups of our databases. We are sending it to S3, and we have one script which also do the reinforcing part of the database server. And whenever whenever some issue comes, make sure you have you work on a copy. Like some issues, any issue comes, make sure you don't work play with your main critical directories, which is PGS log, PGC log, directory. You can play with PG log because it's it's not <coughs> it will not not really affect your database server. But uh, make sure you will not touch these directories PG log which can contain some of your wall uh, files and all um, uh, target indicates. Uh, and uh, whenever uh, this uh, app sync is full page right, it will it will it will help you all uh, whenever there is a uh, reboot or any crash on any database server. So it will make sure that the directory data is not corrupted. So every time because it's 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 very full sync file sync on each array every day. So when you have different kind of applications uh, running on your database servers, make sure your architecture is simple. It's not like that, uh, you you're mixing many too many applications with one database server and uh, giving access to all the unnecessary people also. And uh, <coughs> you, uh, the more important thing is, uh, you every time, every detail you are doing this, it, it, it looks only on your database matrices. Say, this much transition, this much this thing. So it, it, it will definitely help you if you know your application also. So sometimes, if, if you are able to relate an application problem with a database problem, then definitely you have a like, more strong world on your database. So understand your applications also, like what they are doing and how much uh, significance of applications are there and how they are communicating to, it, to, it, to, uh, to your database. It is similar to also that. So um, since alerting is like uh, this, this amount of database server, production database server, it, uh, we, we are, we are, what we are doing now is we are grouping the alerts. So since we have some timestamp based matrices on the graphite, we are grouping alerts on all the polo levels. We are not doing alerting on the like, individual core servers. Imagine you have 200 servers and every something goes wrong or something, you will get 200 alerts on that that, that pole. It's better to group the alert and check the value and alert on that. It will, it will make your life easy. Like if you know this is a problem, then obviously this is a problem. You, know, you don't need to pay them or you don't need to get alerted 12, 20 times for that thing. So a uh, so few, like two years back, uh, like we were facing a lot of issues. So what we what we did in our like daily schedule is we have we have to do this stand up and understand the significance of all the alerts, whatever is coming. So we we, we spoke all the team members like why is coming, if any application interest in thousand individuals, all those people also. So daily we have to do the stand up to understand all the each and every alert so that the alerts will reduce like consistently. Will, so daily we are around like eight to ten maximum alerts. So if something is wrong. It also depends on the other metrics, on the network also. 
but we it's it's very as as compared to one or two years back. And uh, it's it's better to alert alert in case there is something wrong with your database server. You you don't you don't need to wait for some application user to come and say your DB is slow. So better you should get alerted first rather than alert your application team users are calling you saying your database server is slow. You guys are, are you using streaming replication with async slaves and then you're cascading down the multiple levels? No, async is off. So it's, 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 it's not synchronous, it's asynchronous so it's async, but yeah. streaming replication. Yeah. And then you cascade to the multiple levels? Yes, correct. Okay. okay. And then what are you guys using for your read load balancing? Yes. So there are two types of load balancing we are doing. One is uh, we are using a network layer virtual IP. We have created a virtual IP in that follow level, like it and we are using a VIP with virtual IP and it added all the IPs of all the slaves. So every time it, uh, new slave add, we added and we inform the network team in this IP and please add it to the calls. So this is for one one application and the one most like small IP is using HF also from the application. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's a that's a good question. So I didn't cover that part. So we were using log stash to analyze all the labs, and we were sending messages to Elasticsearch, and from Elasticsearch on top of it we are running Kibana or any. We can also run Gravity. So we have that messages, but we have not that much control on that. Like pretty easy. We we can we, we are able to just how much reads and this much traffic is coming. But some more intelligence needs to be in place. So that's a one more thing we have to cover it up. But it's working well. It's working well. Still not.